There are hundreds of specialist terms and abbreviations used on the railway. Several relate to personal track safety, and it's important that you understand them. You are considered to be in danger from trains if you are on or near the line. This means one of three things. You're standing on a railway line, you're within three meters, ten feet of a line, or you're doing engineering or technical work within 1.25 meters, four feet, of a platform edge. To work on or near the line, you must have your valid Sentinel track safety card with you, including an in-date PTS qualification and medical. If you're not on or near the line, but you're within the railway boundary and can be seen from an approaching train, you are said to be on the line side. A position of safety is a place where it's safe to stand when a train is passing. You're in a position of safety if you're at least two meters, that's six feet six inches, from the nearest line on which a train might approach. If the speed limit on this line is no more than 100 miles per hour, this distance can be reduced to 1.25 meters, four feet. Although one piece of railway track looks very much like any other, the component parts and equipment can vary quite a lot. For the purposes of personal track safety, these are the basics. Running rails are the two rails on which a train's wheels run. On many lines, they also carry a small electrical current called a track circuit, which is used as part of the signalling system. Running rails are supported on sleepers, which keep the rails the correct distance apart. Ballast holds the track in place. The space between the running rails is called the forefoot. The six foot is the area between a pair of lines which are the normal distance apart. Sometimes a wider space is provided, known as a ten foot or wide way. These are just terms, not exact measurements. The cess is the area alongside the railway and if possible should be used for access along the line. Some cesses include proper made up pathways. Near depots, stations and signal boxes Authorised walking routes are often provided to and from places of work. Details are given in a document called the Hazard Directory. Trains use running lines to go from... Trains come in all shapes and sizes. Some weigh many hundreds of tonnes and travel at high speeds. Others are much lighter and move at walking pace. Either way, if a train and a person come together, the person always comes off worst. The term train includes on-track plant used for engineering work. In fact, any motorized vehicle which runs on the rails is regarded as a train. It might sound obvious, but remember, trains can't swerve to take avoiding action and can approach without being heard. Although from a distance they almost appear to be stationary, a 75 mile an hour train covers a mile in 48 seconds. For a 125 mile an hour train, it's just 29 seconds. And they can't stop quickly either. If this driver applied the emergency brake, it might still take more than a mile for his train to come to a standstill. Every piece of railway is unique. Track curvature, cuttings, embankments, bridges, viaducts and tunnels can all reduce the distance at which you can see or hear a train approaching. Those same features can also restrict your position of safety. Coming into contact with a train remains the single highest cause of death and serious injury on the railway. Don't become a statistic. Take great care whenever you're on or near the line. On some parts of the railway, the space between the track and the nearest wall, fence or structure is very narrow. These are areas of limited clearance, marked by a red and white checkerboard sign. It means that there is no position of safety on this side of the railway for the length of the structure beyond it. Staff are usually prohibited from these areas unless a line has been blocked. Refuges are sometimes provided in areas of limited clearance to create a safe place to stand when a train is passing. They can be built out over an embankment or cut into a wall. 
Although most tunnels have refuges, they are very dangerous places and people are not generally allowed in if the lines through them are still open. This sign, no refuges, means that there isn't a position of safety or any refuges on this side of the railway, but there are on the other side. Some signs speak for themselves. Don't go past this sign unless trains have been stopped or it's an emergency situation. Your employer must provide you with any personal protective equipment required for your work. Keep it clean, check it for damage and report any defects. PPE can only protect you if it's used or worn properly. There are minimum PPE requirements when you're on or near the line or line side. On an authorised walking route, you have to wear at least a Class 1 high visibility mini vest. The class number is usually printed on the label. Elsewhere, approved safety footwear, a safety helmet and HV clothing on the upper body are required. The clothing must be at least class 2, such as a full waistcoat or jacket. There are exceptions to these requirements. Your employer will tell you about any which apply to you. Depending on the site rules, you might also have to wear other items, such as ear defenders, goggles, gloves or overalls. Workwear is the normal clothing you wear to work. Make sure it's suitable for the work, location and conditions. Road vehicles can be a serious hazard to trains if they're used near the line without proper care. If you're driving a vehicle, don't allow any part of it to come within two meters, six foot six, of any line on which a train might approach. Switch the hazard warning lights on and in darkness or poor visibility, use dipped headlights. Only turn a vehicle at a suitable turning point and keep the back of it furthest from the line. Make sure that all red lights are off when the vehicle is parked. If you have to go on or near the line, make sure you're clear about the dangers at your location and how you're going to stay safe. You'll need to know the approved access point, the speed and direction of trains on each line, and any hazards which might affect your safety, such as an area of limited clearance. This information can be found in the sectional appendix and hazard directory. Advice could also be obtained from your manager or supervisor. If there's no safer route, you can walk alone on or near the line to get to or from a place of work. You must keep at least 20 metres or 20 yards from anyone else to avoid being distracted. Use an authorised walking route or other pathway if there is one. Otherwise, walk in the cess or, if necessary, in the forefoot. Wherever possible, face oncoming traffic and stay in a position of safety. Keep watching and listening for approaching trains. Look up every five seconds or so. Don't allow yourself to become distracted. Switch your mobile phone off unless it's vital for safety reasons. Never use your mobile unless you're in a position of safety. Hello, Ghost Line Network Rail. If you need to cross the line, use a bridge, subway or level crossing if there is one. Otherwise, find a place where there's sufficient sighting distance, make sure no trains are approaching, and cross without stepping on the rails or sleepers. Take care near points. They could move and trap your foot. In sidings and work sites, stationary trains and vehicles can hide another train approaching on a line beyond them. Make sure it's clear before you cross. On lines with conductor rails, find a gap or a location where protective boarding is provided. If neither of these is available, step over both the running rail and the conductor rail in one movement. Never put your foot between them. If you're part of a group which is going to walk or work on or near the line, a controller of site safety, known as a COS, will be appointed to make sure nobody is put in danger by trains or electrification equipment. 
This involves setting up a safe system. As well as the actual work, the safe system will cover getting to and from the site and, if necessary, setting up safety equipment and blocking the line. To act as COS, a person must be qualified and wear a COS armlet or badge. I believe it to be in the left hand stop. The job of the person in charge is to confirm that the work itself is carried out to the required standards. They'll make sure that a suitable safe system has been set up before allowing work to start. This is particularly important if the work affects the safety of trains. In practice, if the person in charge has a cost qualification, the two roles might be carried out by the same person. Work on the railway is carried out in either a red or green zone. Green zones are the preferred option because there are no open lines within the site of work. There could, however, be engineering trains or on-track plant moving no faster than walking pace. There are three types of green zone. A safeguarded green zone is created by blocking all lines at the site of work. For a fenced green zone, Plastic netting, barricade tape or a safety barrier must be erected between the site of work and lines still open to movements. The third option is to provide a space between the site of work and the nearest open line. This is called a separated green zone. In most cases, a site warden will be appointed to warn anyone who strays into the space. They must be qualified to do the job and be identified as site warden. No site warden is required if the group is just you and the COS or the site of work is at least 3 metres, that's 10 feet, from any open line. In a red zone, a warning is given that a train is approaching. The COS must make sure that enough prior warning is given for all members of the group to reach the position of safety at least 10 seconds before the train passes. There are five methods of warning. An automatic track warning system, or ATWS, detects approaching trains through a connection with the signalling system or equipment attached to the rail. The warning is given by trackside flashing lights and sirens and with some systems a personal warning device. A train operated warning system, TOWS, uses track circuits to detect trains. When it's switched on, trackside sirens sound an intermittent tone to confirm that it's working properly. When a train approaches, the tone changes to a continuous warning. For those on site, LAUS, a lookout operated warning system, warns using the same equipment as an ATWS. Flashing lights, sirens and possibly a personal device. But the warning is triggered by a lookout, standing some distance along the track. Peewee works in a similar way to Laos, but it's rather older and there's just a siren on sight. Unassisted lookouts give a warning by horn, whistle, touch or a special cut-off device on noisy equipment. Like a sight warden, a lookout must be qualified to do the job and be identified as Lookout. Hello, my name is Paul Ryder. I've met Whitrill. Before I'm you walk to site or start work, yeah, the COS will show you their Sentinel card and check that you have the necessary in-date qualifications. They will then brief you on the safety arrangements. This information will include the nature and location of the work. The site of work is at Apley Junction. We're going to be carrying out point minutes on 5108 alpha points on the down Shipley. The lines at the site, whether they are open or blocked, their direction and the speed limit. The nearest of the two lines is the down Shipley, which is blocked. The furthest line is the up Shipley, and that is still open to traffic. The trains will approach from the left. The speed limit is 90 miles an hour. The approved access point and route to site. The access point is at Carvely Lane. We'll get to site by walking in the down cess for about 200 metres. Information about hazards at the site or en route. The access path is uneven and there's lots of vegetation in places. There are cables and equipment at the site of work. The ballast is also quite greasy so take care not to slip or trip.
the emergency the communications details. If we need to contact the signaller, there's a line side phone at 5108 Alpha Points on the Down Shipley. I also have a mobile phone. And the method of red or green zone working. We're going to walk to site and work. In